Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and today we are going to be taking a look at the new D&D Striker, which is basically a console-friendly GMC Sierra 1500. Now, I've also included in this video, or I will be including in this video, a look at a really cool gooseneck trailer that can also haul logs that actually can go with this particular truck, but we're going to be looking at that a little bit later in the video, and the beginning of the video is going to be focused solely on the truck itself. So again, like I said before, this should be fully console-friendly. As of recording this video, it's obviously not there yet, but I would expect to hopefully see this thing on consoles later on down the road in the future. Also, hopefully after we get the uh, the memory patch. Now, let's go ahead and fire it up and see what it can do. Oh, that's an interesting soundtrack. Actually, a really interesting soundtrack to the truck. Yo, look at this interior, bro. That's actually pretty sick. All right, let's go ahead and take it inside the garage and see what we have in terms of customization options. Now, it's definitely really cool to see a truck like this in the game, especially I know a lot of people love this particular body style. So straight off the bat, you're starting with a B power to weight rating, and that's going to be your stock engine. Now, your upgraded is going to go to an A, and your performance is going to go to an S+. Plus. Now, judging by the previous trucks in this particular creator's lineup, these should all be pretty well balanced along the lines of what you would see out of some of the vanilla trucks. So we're going to go ahead and go with the performance engine. Next, we have stock, highway, and off-road gearbox options, the off-road being a 5-speed and the highway being a 6-speed. We're going to go with the 5-speed for this particular application, and we may swap it out later on down the road when we go to do the bridge jump or something crazy. Now, suspension-wise, you have stock, which is actually pretty high already, lifted, which just gives you quite a bit of travel, and then tow, which does raise the rear a little bit. So for the purposes of this build, we're going to start with the lifted suspension so we can go through all of the tire options, and then we'll swap it out for the tow suspension a little bit later and try out the trailer options. So we're going to go with the lifted suspension. Now you're starting out with a 38, but you also have these... Whoa, that's awesome. They're labeled KO2, but they look like a Baja Claw. You have those in 38 and 40. And then off-road wise, you have these in 38 and 40, which actually also changes the wheels, which means we can also uh, select some other wheels a little bit later on. Now, these are very, very interesting. I dig those, though. Those are probably going to be really good in the mud because they're a little bit narrower. And then you have 38-inch boggers stiff, 38-inch boggers soft, which basically means low lower tire pressure. And then the same in 40-inch. So I'm actually going to try out the... God, those look so wide so wide. Let's go with the 40 inch soft boggers. I really do dig those though. Look, those look awesome. Now we're going to do the autonomous scout extended and diff lock. It basically comes already pre-installed. So that's really nice. And we're going to do a tall front facing snorkel. Then frame add-ons, you have a logging trailer hitch. You also have trunk supplies, which I believe you can put both in. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. I'm loving that. This camera is a little weird. I'm not I'm not mad about it, but it's definitely interesting. So you can put a little roll bar in the bed. I'm not exactly necessarily a fan of that particular style, but if you like those, you can do it. You also have the scout trailer hitch and the side steps, which you can either have on or off. I personally prefer them off, although I would really like to see a set of rock sliders available as well. Now, front bumper-wise, you have a default bumper. You also have an off-road heavy bumper one and a off-road heavy bumper two. I actually really like off-road heavy bumper one. I think that looks really good. Now, we have a couple of different wheel styles available with the boggers. You have the KSLs, you have the M Black, and the M Chrome. They basically look like a Method-style wheel. So we're going to actually go with the black ones. And then, let's see, color-wise, we actually have a really big range of colors. You also have Camo, which you can use if you so desire. But you have your default colors, which are all very bright, very vibrant. But you also have, oh, that's a really cool olive green color. I really dig that. And that's about, wait a minute. Okay, I was like, is there, there should be more. The white actually looks really, really good as well. That's, that provides some great contrast. And of course, you can throw beans on the dash, my dude. Absolutely, you can throw your beans on the dash. And you can also put, um, like an I Love Mud little, like, air freshener as well as a Delta Gaming air freshener card. And then accessories wise, oh, Oh, so you can actually, so you can put them in, but the camera goes outside the rig. I gotcha, so we'll put the pine tree in there. And then now, we're gonna go ahead and leave the garage and see what this thing is all about. Let's fire it back up. And now, we're gonna go ahead and actually go to the trailer store and hopefully be able to hook that logging trailer up to it just for um, illustration purposes. Let's see what that boy looks like. And actually, the off-road gearbox for this thing does have fine-tune available, which is really cool. 
So let's see. Delta Gooseneck logging trailer. That's awesome. That's really, really cool. So I'm assuming that's going to be a medium log load. Let's go ahead and try that out real quick. And this will make it useful for basically any campaign map that has logging scenarios. So that's awesome. Let's find... So long logs will not work. Where's the medium logs? Medium logs. Come on. Short logs. Oh my god. Come on. Medium logs. Oh wait. Truck. Tr there we go. Alright. So we're good to go. That actually doesn't weigh it down all that badly with the lifted suspension. Let's see what it looks like with the towing suspension. Now, I believe that would be suspension 2. And that actually looks really good. That looks really level. That looks really level. Let me make sure I haven't done the wrong one. And I'll go to suspension zero. Okay, yeah, no. It's definitely suspension two is the towing one. So that looks really, really, really good. And I definitely think it's worth using if you like log hauling. And I could absolutely see people, especially once this thing makes its way to consoles, I could definitely see people getting into log hauling with this truck and really using it to its full potential. I, I love the way it looks. I think it looks awesome. I mean, and if you, honestly, also, if you like just kind of taking pictures of trucks, you know, and just seeing what looks good, that right there, I love that. I, I think that looks great. I think that looks absolutely awesome, and I really hope that people take full advantage of not only the truck, but its log hauling capabilities. So now, let's actually disconnect, well, let's not do that, first of all. Let's remove the cargo, and then let's delete the trailer. We'll use our little handy-dandy garage to do that. And let's see, gooseneck hitch, where is the, oh, gooseneck log, deleted, and now we can go back to suspension one, which is going to be our lifted off-road suspension that we can use in terms of, like, crawling, mudding, trail riding, whatever you really want to use it for, and also, I love the custom, like, suspension cages that they actually built for this truck, and you can see kind of like the little bed cutouts, too, that looks really, really good. Loving the custom logos as well. It says D&D on the bed and then Striker um, down in the left-hand corner. Really, really good work on this truck. Really good. I love it. So high range is definitely, like, and that's with the Max engine. It's definitely designed to be very vanilla-esque because, as you can see, we're cruising in high and it is not over the top at all. That's definitely been a theme with these trucks from Delta Gaming. I definitely think that they do a great job with balancing their mods within the parameters of what people would expect from a vanilla truck with, like, just a little bit of an upgrade. Let's see how it does on this climb. It does great. And then the nice thing about a high-range gear like this one is that it can be used well on the trails. It can be used reliably, and it can be used without worrying that you're going to launch your truck into oblivion. Now, let's drive up this edge here. We'll get our locker on and see what we can do in terms of flex. It's not terrible. It's not going to be any kind of like, you know, flex monster or any kind of rock crawler, but that's not really what it was designed for. It wasn't designed to be a crazy rock crawler. It was designed to be a good all-round, all-purpose truck that if it needed to go down some trails, it could. So let's give it a little bit of a run up the rocks right here and just see what we can get it into. Nice and easy does it. There we go. Oh, God. It does not want to turn right now, does it? Back it up just a bit. Oh, yeah, this is a little out of its element, but that's fine. I'm not, you know, not criticizing it for that by any means. Just trying to push it to whatever its limit is, and that's clearly its limit. It doesn't really want to go up that rock. But again, I'm sure that could also be altered by a tire change. But, you know, again, at the end of the day, it's definitely meant to be along the lines of a vanilla vehicle. And I think it's definitely meant to fit well within a modded campaign playthrough. And I'm sure... That it would. I've also got a rock caught on my rear axle, which is moderately annoying, but not the truck's fault. My fault for taking that line, but it's all good. So let's see how she does in the mud now. Well, let's make our way down this edge, and we'll head for the mud, and basically throw it in high and see what she can do. Let's go ahead and give it a repair real quick, so we're going into the mud with a fresh truck. Throw it in high and see how it does. And again, high range in this is the equivalent of low plus in most other trucks, which is incredible to me. And even with that, you can see it's getting a little bit of spinning. Wow! It was designed to be extremely realistic. Because that got it stuck. And this is not deep mud, as we all know. So let's see. I was going to actually switch out the tires. But the problem is... Let's see. JK wheel. Okay. Hmm. Super soft. Aha! There we go. So we got some boggers on it now. Let's lock the diffs, put it in low minus. 
Wow, it's still not wanting to go anywhere whatsoever. Definitely, if you like a challenge, this is definitely a truck for you. So real quick, let's go ahead and actually grab a uh, grab another truck to perform just a quick rescue. Ironically, it's another Chevy, but this guy will perform a really quick rescue, and we will go ahead and extract that truck from the mud pit. Easy. There we go. Quick and easy extraction there. Let's go ahead and swap back over to the d, &D Striker and see how it does on the rest of the mud pit. Back into high again with these tires because I feel like we may have gotten off on the wrong foot with it. You know, like, we'll, we'll give it one more try. Low plus lockers on with the Swampers. See, now it's doing great. Maybe all it needed was a tire change. Maybe all it really did need was a tire change because now it's doing great. Look at that. So maybe, again, like I said, maybe that really made all the difference in the world. Now, I know I didn't take it into the second mud pit, but honestly, I feel like it, it could do it. It would probably just do it very, very slow, especially if we're going off of the performance in the first mud pit, for sure. So now we're going to head for the dips obstacle, and I'm sure it'll do fine here, but I really want to see what the point is at which it starts to high center itself. You know what I mean? It's going to low plus, lockers on, plunging her in. And I'm going to definitely take a more realistic line here. We're going to go diagonally as opposed to going straight on like I do in a lot of other trucks. Because again, this truck is designed to be driven realistically. And I can definitely tell that from the way it, it seems to perform for sure. So going diagonally is definitely helping our case here. Definitely, definitely helping our case in terms of walking it over these, um, walking it over these dips. Let's just see what happens if we do take it straight on. So it drags the bottom of the truck a little bit, but it doesn't drag it enough to where I would say it's gonna, you know, make the obstacle impassable. It's still a very, very capable and very, very good truck, I would definitely say. And it absolutely belongs in any realistic yet modded campaign playthrough. So now it's time to head for the bridge jump and we're going to go ahead and throw our ever-fun-to-use highway gearbox in it, which I believe is gearbox 01. Let's go ahead and refresh that real quick. Yeah, there's our six-speed. High range in this should be... Wow, high range in this is actually about the same. It's not all that fast. Now, granted, I know that, like, I'm my opinion on fast trucks is a little skewed because a lot of the trucks I drive are extremely freaking fast. Extremely. And I get that. And this is definitely, you know, for something that is designed to be relatively val relatively balanced with other, like, vanilla trucks, it's definitely quick when you get it up into sixth gear in automatic mode with the highway gearbox. But high range, even in the highway gearbox, is not that fast. High range is probably the equivalent to about third gear or so. And then fourth, fifth, and sixth are going to be your fast gears. Now, I haven't jumped in at all yet, so I don't know if it's going to nosedive or not, but let's find out. What do you say, Beans? Here we go. Sixth gear just rolling. Jump time. Oh, wow. Dude, that stayed beautifully level. That stayed absolutely beautifully level. Like, that makes me wish that there was a racing engine option for this. Because think about it, if the truck is able to stay that level and it's that well designed and that well built to where it stays that level off of jumps, I would love to have all the realistic options plus a high powered racing engine option because this thing would absolutely rip around the stadium super truck course with a race suspension and a race engine, oh my god, it would be so fun to drive there. But with all that being said, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this truck in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys next time.